Our investigations into Wednesday's blast at Czech fugitive Radovan Krejčer's pawn shop are continuing. Two people were killed in the explosion in Bedford View. Three others were wounded. For more on this, I'm joined now by Hawk spokesperson Paul Ramaloko and security consultant Paul O'Sullivan. Paul and Paul, welcome to Morning News Today. Paul Ramaloko, tell us where is the investigation at the moment? Uh, it is too early to be really talking about uh, the progress we made. Um, our, our crime scene uh, experts just uh, packed their bags from the crime scene and not long. Mm -hmm. So we are at the stage where we are analyzing the information we collected. And it is indeed uh, too early to be saying, uh, uh, yeah, how far did we go on this uh, uh, crime? Now, we, we heard that Radovan Krejcher went into hiding after that incident. Have you managed to track him down, question him at all? We are not sure because uh, we you are, are not, not sure where he is or not sure whether you've tracked him down? We are not sure if he went I into hiding oh, or okay. what because uh, we are focused on the uh, crime scene. We are looking at this um, uh, crime with an open mind. We were not necessarily looking for him. So either he go in a, in, uh, in an hiding or he walk on the street for now, I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm just curious, Paul, you say you weren't necessarily looking for him. It was his business that was bombed. He's had other uh, alleged attempts on his life this year. If we look at the old James Bond, that's what we'll term it style. Why would you not be looking for him? I'm not sure if uh, that was uh, his business. Uh, because uh, we just started with our investigation uh, recently mm -hmm. and uh, I wouldn't want to go to an angle where I say it's his business or not. I mean, at the right time, when we have to, we feel that we can release the information, we'll definitely do so. But uh, we are not saying whether it's his business or not. Paula Sullivan, you said the other day, uh, the day after this bombing, when we spoke to you on Morning News today, that uh, Radovan Krejcher was in for a surprise that day. There was a, a court application as we were speaking. What can, are you able to tell us more about that? What happened to that? What was it all about? No, I think that's still in the pipeline, uh, so we don't need to dwell on that. But I think Radovan Krejcher will certainly have a surprise before Christmas. Before Christmas, mm. uh, and you're still not able to tell us. Give us I any I more details about I don't think it's that. my job to be telling mm. uh, these things, but I know what's going on behind the scenes, and I'm very confident that uh, justice will be done. Now, a few months ago, you know, people, ordinary people, friends of mine, family, go, "Why should we care about Radovan Krejcher? We're so tired of hearing about Radovan Krejcer. Why should South Africa care about Radovan Krejcer?" Well, they should care mm. because this so-called business, Money Point, is is a, a shop, a pawn shop. And for the most part, Let's I mean... Let's be clear, it's P-A-W-N. Yes, yes, P-A-W-N. Uh, although I'm sure the people that frequent the place would probably n not be averse to the other type of right. corner as well. Now, uh, I placed that business under surveillance for a while, and I found that some of the characters going there were actually uh, selling stolen property. So when your house gets robbed, when you're tied up, and they steal all your jewelry, it's those type of entities that are buying that jewelry. Now, Kretcher himself tried to get involved in a gold refinery. In fact, he even took up office at Rand Refinery because he was having so much gold melted down that he was selling. And, you know, no taxes were paid on any of that income. The man has made an absolute fortune from criminal activities, and we should be very worried because he's brought his own little crime wave to South Africa. And like all mafia operations, he just sits on the top of it and dishes out the instructions. Mm -hmm. And when things go wrong, people vanish or they get murdered. Now, you're doing all the surveillance, and I know you've had particular interest in Radovan Krejcer as well. Have you been sharing this information with, with the, you know, the Hawks? Yes. And I mean, obviously, we work very closely. Yeah. It's a one-way sharing process because they're not entitled under law to yes. share the outcome of their investigations with me. And I accept that. I have done for many years now. Um, you know, it, it's like throwing stuff into a black hole. You don't really know how they use it or what they do with it, mm. but they certainly have thanked me for some of the information I've provided and some of the sworn statements I've managed to obtain. And I've managed to turn some, some very key witnesses. Mm. So I think we will see some progress. It's a painstaking job. You know, um, the untouchables, the, the, the Chicago... Uh, Gangsters if you want to call them well the, the untouchables was the police unit the oh, government okay. unit that was put together to bring down the chicago gangsters in the roaring uh, 20s and they took four and a half years to bring al capone down now um you know i, I i'm not saying it's going to take four and a half years for the hawks to bring Kretcher down they've been busy with him now for three years but i think we will see some action uh, in the not too distant future all right and are we saying that Radovan Krejcer is 
directly involved? Are we alleging he's directly involved in well, this crime wave you and see, all of this crime that we're You know, in the same in? way that Al Capone sat at a table in a restaurant and dished out instructions, Kretcher runs his, his activities in the same way. So he, you won't catch him with a smoking gun. You won't find him with a gun in his hand, although he has been known to have a gun in his hand from time to time. I think on his 40th birthday, he took one of his bodyguard's guns and fired a few shots in the air. And he did that in front of a general in the police mm. uh, who happened to be on his payroll, mm -hmm. you know. So uh, it's very difficult to put a case together against a man like this, especially when some of the key potential witnesses wind up dead. Hmm. Paul Ramaloko, all of, these, uh, all, all of this sort of uh, information coming from Paul O'Sullivan from his own investigations, have you verified any of this? Have you sort of taken this investigation seriously enough, uh, given now that people are dying around Radovan Crater? Uh, <coughs> Paul O'Sullivan will agree with me that uh, all the information he supplied us with, we gave it uh, the necessary attention. But uh, we are saying that uh, it is not our policy to be talking about uh, individuals before they can be taken to court. Well, there is a lot of work we are mm. doing, um, but uh, uh, we are saying <coughs> uh, not long a distance. Um, uh, people will, I mean, uh, see individuals who will be brought to book in, uh, this, in this regard. We don't want to be uh, jumping before the gun. You will agree with me that uh, this is part of a bigger elephant and we are eating it uh, piece by piece. But at the end of the day, we will uh, finish all of it. Now, lots of people wanting to know why Radovan Krejci hasn't been sent back uh, to the Czech Republic yet. Why is it? I mean, we know he's here, not legally. Why? Um, you will know for the fact that uh, we had a few cases against him, and um, we did not uh, succeed to uh, prosecute him uh, in court. And we learned a lot from uh, those cases. Mm -hmm. This time around, we are saying, uh, I mean, uh, uh, if there is anything against him, it must uh, really be watertight that uh, w when we go to court, we don't want to walk in court today and walk out tomorrow. We want to work for, <coughs> for success. So we are saying uh, people of Botford view must not really worry and say this uh, a guy is just going around and whatever. At the end of the day, we will come out and uh, p uh, pronounce on individuals who are behind all these things, being it a kingpin mm -hmm. or the trigger man, all these uh, individuals will be brought to book. Paula Sullivan, this little surprise that you say Santa is going to be bringing Radovan Crater before Christmas, would it involve him on a plane back to, would it result in that? Uh, you know, th the thing about Christmas presents is if, if you know what you're going to get beforehand, Santa won't come. Now, uh, the important thing to remember is Crecher currently has a high court order against the South African government to prevent himself from being extradited pending the outcome of his appeal for refugee status. He's applied for political asylum. So, you know, he's using the proceeds of crime to hire lawyers who are quite happy, by the way, to receive the proceeds mm. of crime and then stand up in court and lie for him. And he's prolonged this existence in this country. But I think one of two things will happen in the not too distant future. And that will be either A, that he's shipped back to where he came from and where he belongs, mm -hmm. or B, that he will be in prison. And I hope it's the first, because if he goes to prison, we'll have the most corrupt prison uh, in the country will be the prison that he's staying in. All right, unfortunately, that's all we have time for on the subject. That was Hawk spokesperson Paul Ramaloko and security consultant Paul O'Sullivan on Radovan Crater. Coming up after the break, Gift of the Givers, MTR Suleiman joins us in studio to chat about the aid organization's Philippines mission. We'll be back in a short while. News that moves. ENCA.com.